y'all wave those palm leaves while we sing this song. Uh, if everybody will turn to 171, we'll sing this through as our call to worship. stand and take your hymnals and turn to 170. We'll sing all three verses. Gracious and loving Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, our many blessings. Father, for this facility that you, you've blessed us with, this technology. And Lord, I thank you for each and every person here. Father, the work that they do, the work that we've accomplished in, in the last few days, Lord, I just thank you for it each and every one of them. And Lord, I just ask for strength for all of us as we learn the lesson of humility from Christ, that we can go forth and be humble and be loving and compassionate to all those around us. Father, for those that are on our prayer list, Lord, I just ask that you touch them with your healing hand. Father, give strength to the caregivers of the church. And Lord, give peace to those that have lost loved ones. That they know you're there each and every step of the way. Father, I ask you to keep our military and our first responders safe. And Lord, give guidance to the leaders of this country and those around the world. 
Lord, help us to overcome evil. Lord, as we go forth, let us not just go along to get along, but let us shout the gospel from the rooftops. Let us not be scared because we know you're there with us. And Father, as we go forth into this service today, I just ask for the words to speak, that all that we say and all that we do, we bring praise, honor, and glory to you. And Father, as we've gathered here this morning, let us come together and pray as you've commanded us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You'll take your hymnals and turn to 77. We'll sing this first, second, and last verse, How Great Thou Art, 77. <clears throat> <clears throat> stand. Turn to page 95 and let's sing some praise to God. Stand. Please stand.
what today is, right? What is it? Palm Sunday. What happened on Palm Sunday? No. Close. It's a few days on down the road. We're working toward that. What happened on Palm Sunday? Try again. You talked about it already. I'm hearing that in my, my, my ear. We talked about it. What happened on Palm Sunday? What happened with the palm leaves? What's the thing about the palm leaves? You're waving the palm leaves, right? What's, what's significant about that? What happened on Palm Sunday? You remember the story about Jesus and the donkey and the triumphal entry? You remember that story now? Huh? Are you sure? Am I going to have to talk to your Sunday school teacher to make sure it's been taught right? Huh? No? I know you do. So here we got this short-term memory. Well, that's okay. Most of us in here, you know, we're, we, we have short-term memory. You know, it's okay. Well, let me tell you about it. Okay, I'm going to read this, this passage of Scripture to you. All right? It says, After Jesus had said this, he went ahead. He was going up to Jerusalem. He approached Bethpage and Bethany. The, here, the hill there was called the Mount of Olives. Okay, you guys will hear that in Bible studies from now to when you're old and gray-headed like me. Mount of Olives, okay? Jesus sent out two of his disciples, and he told them. He said, this is what I need you to do, okay? How many times has mom and dad said, hey, this is what I need you to do? I need you to take out the trash. I need you to make up your bed. I need you to do your homework, right? And you jump to and you do all three of those, right? See, I'm glad you're being honest. Honesty is the best policy in here. And he said, go to the village. I want you to go ahead, go to the village. And he said, when you get there, you'll find a donkey's colt tied up. No one has ever ridden it. Now, what do we know about horses and things like that that have never uh, been ridden? They'll buck you, right? They don't want anybody on their back, right? Get pretty, get pretty angry, can't they, Right? Says the bull rider over here. Or so he thinks. And he said, untie them and bring them to me. Just bring it to me. Now, you know, there, there's some problems there. Okay? So Jesus is just sending two guys in there to take somebody else's property, right? I mean, that's the way it reads, am I right? That's what he said, dude, just go get it and untie it and bring it to me. But it's bigger than that. And he says, if someone asks you why you're touching these animals, you just say, look, the Lord needs them, and it's going to be okay. All right? Now, there's a lesson to be learned there, and we'll get to that one later. <clears throat> and so the disciples went, and they brought the colt to Jesus, just as he had commanded them. And, you know, then they, they threw their coats over it, so Jesus could sit on it, okay? And, and, and as he sat down on it, he, he rode into Jerusalem, and they laid their coats on the ground also, and they laid these palm branches down on the ground so that this, this colt wouldn't even get his feet dirty, right? His hooves wouldn't get dirty as, as he walked down the road and everything. And you say, well, what's the big deal about that? Why do I care what he rode in on? Well, see, Jesus was not about conflict, confrontation, and war, right? Now, he could have said, look, go into town and find me that big, beautiful white stallion and bring it to me, okay, and I'm going to put on this robe laced in gold and a nice stole, and I'm going to comb my hair back and put a little hair gel in it and fix everything nice, and I'm going to get on that horse, and I'm going to ride in there like I own the world. Right? Well, there's problems with that back in that day. If he did that, that's a sign of war. Back in those days when the king or the generals would ride in on horses, okay, that was a, a warlike gesture. And that's not very humbling, okay? That's not very uh, considerate to other people. That's not really showing love. That's showing authority. And, and, and I'm going to ride in. I'm going to show you guys how it's going to be done. And then, see, those Roman soldiers wouldn't like that too much either, would they? 
And so that wouldn't be showing love, that would be kind of showing a little dominance. I'm stronger than you and I'm better than you. So Jesus didn't do that. What does he do? He picks a, a beast of burden, an, an, an animal that, that, that gets all the weight put on it. You know, when they go on a journey, you know, you've seen on TV the donkeys back there in the back with all the stuff and somebody sitting on the horse with a rope and they're pulling him along, right? Okay? There's something to be said about that because in a few short days, the burden was about to be put on Jesus. The sins of the world were about to be put on his shoulders and he was about to be crucified for sins he didn't commit. So he said, look, it's not about riding in on the big white horse. It's not about being seen, okay? It's about humbling yourself, doing something for others, being nice to other people, showing love and showing compassion for people around you. It's not always about being first in line. Sometimes it's okay to be last, okay? It's not always about the spotlight being on us, okay? So he, he took this lowly beast of burden and he sat on it and he rode in. Nice, quiet, and humble. But see, all these people were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And, 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 and they're doing all these great things. Okay? And we're going to talk about the rest of that in just a minute. But do you see my point? It's about doing for other folks, all right? It's about, it's okay to be quiet. It's okay to let someone else go ahead of us. It's not always about that grand entrance, okay? We see people doing it all the time on TV, you know. They, they, they come in, they got to fling their hair and let you see how they're dressed and all that, you know, and they're all cool. Well, see, Jesus was cool. and he didn't, have to, he didn't have to do all that. He let action speak louder than words, okay? You need to do the same thing. Be nice. Don't be. Don't bully people around. Help people out. And have a smile, right? Kind of like mirror, mirror on the wall. See that smile, Mr. Bull Rider over here. Okay, you guys good? All right, let's pray. Gracious and loving Father, Lord, help these children to understand that it's not always about the show, but it's about love and compassion our neighbor. Let them, as they go forth and as they're in school, let them be the example for others that there's a better way of doing things. We don't have to bully each other. We don't have to be the first in line or uh, all those other things. That we can come together and we can be loving and we can be thankful. So let us learn that lesson. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We look at the triumphal entry of Christ and we kind of glaze over it. You know, we just think it's another one of those things in, in, in the list that, that, that Christ is uh, doing. We, we've read the story and we, we just jump over it. And it, it's just like we've talked about in the past. You know, when, when, when Mary was there with, with Christ and the disciples and, you know, I told you the story, how she took that, uh, perfume bottle, that bottle of pure nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it. And that wasn't enough. Then she takes her hair down and she wipes his feet with her hair. Now at first glance, you know, like I told you, we may look at that and say, man, that's kind of nasty, man. Why, why do something like that? There's a lesson in humility. She took a big gamble sitting in a room full of men and, and, and doing what she did, okay? That was not a cultural norm for them. So she kind of broke out on her own and she showed some love and compassion for somebody. She humbled herself before Christ. And so in the coming days, we know the story about Christ will wash the feet of the disciples. And at first glance, we look at that and we say, wow, how disgusting. Because the first thing, like I've told you, that goes through our little brains are Jesus is kneeling at their feet and he's got a bar of soap and a washcloth and a basin of water and, and he's scrubbing their feet. Well, if you go back and you look at their culture, when the disciples entered the room, there would have been a house servant there that would have cleaned their feet before they ever entered. 
That was a cultural norm. So it wasn't about removing dirt, okay? It was about the humbleness. Jesus humbled himself to do that task of a house servant, trying to show us and give us the example of doing something for other people, getting down off our high horse and getting down and, 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 and kneeling before someone else and doing something, you know? And it could be anything. And so we, 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 we kind of glaze over that lesson, and, and we, we just really don't think a lot about it because, like I said, at first glance, it's just something nasty to us. But it's bigger than that, and, and we need to see it, and we need to understand the lesson. And there's another lesson just like it in the triumphal entry. So in Matthew chapter 21, verse 1, It says, when they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent out two disciples telling them, go into the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you should say that the Lord needs them and immediately he will send them. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did just as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt. Then they laid their robes on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their robes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. Then the crowds uh, who went ahead of him and those who followed him kept shouting, you guys ready? Huh? Where's my palm leaf, people? Where did Wilson go? All right. What? What? You, you don't have to come up here, baby. He said, Hosanna. They said, Hosanna to the son of David. He who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken, saying, Who is this? And the crowds kept saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the word of God for the people of God. So, they're approaching uh, Jerusalem. And, and he stops and he says, look guys, this is what I need two of you guys to go do. Now, you know, you got to think about this. He says, go ahead into the village, and there you're going to find. Now, see, most of us would have a problem with there you're going to find, and when you find it, you untie it, and you bring it to me. Because most of us are going to revert back to our John Wayne and Clint Eastwood movies. And we're going to say, wait just a second. When you steal someone else's property, especially a horse, okay, donkey, horse, colt, whatever, those four-legged friendly animals, they hang people for that. Okay? So we immediately, we, we fear going and taking something from someone else. But it's bigger than that. Much bigger than that. Okay? Because he's telling him, don't fear. Don't fear anything. Just do what I've asked you to do. I've taken care of all the details. It's the same thing with our Christian walk. He's like, don't be afraid. I've taken care of all the details. Don't think into it. Don't overthink it. Don't make it more complicated than it already is. Just do what I've asked you to do. Follow the instructions I've given you, and it's going to be okay. And so he's telling them, just go do this. And so they do, and what happens? They, they give them the animals, and here they come back. And so a prophecy was fulfilled. And he says, right there in that, in, in verse 5, he says, Look, your king is coming. Now, just like I told the children this morning, when we think of a king, we think of someone coming in with a nice robe on, and, and they're riding in on this horse or maybe these gold-plated chariots probably pulled by white horses, and they're coming in and they're making the show. 
I have arrived. But see, Jesus had a different way of looking at things because he's like, it's not about me, okay? It's about what I'm trying to teach you. It's about what you need to take from this. And so it's not about a king riding in on a horse. It's about a king riding in a company gentle and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Nothing special about it. Plain, not a very pretty animal. Sometimes they can be quite mean. All right? But this is what Jesus chose to ride in and to make his grand entry into Jerusalem. And, you know, that probably didn't set well with, with a lot of people because, you know, they wanted a king that was going to come in and conquer the Roman government. We want someone that's going to come in here and wipe this place clean. We're going to take control and we're, we're, we're going to live happily ever after. But that wasn't the plan. That wasn't the way things had to be done. So they come back with, with these two animals, right? And, and they lay their, their coats, their cloaks across them. I mean, I want you to get this picture in your head. You've probably seen many pictures of this, you know, where, where, and, and, and they, they, they lay everything on the road, the palm branches and all that. And here Jesus is, and he's sitting sideways on them. A lot of the pictures I've seen, Jesus is sitting sideways on the animal. All right? And it's a little bitty animal. Here you got the king of kings, the son of God, that's sitting sideways on a donkey, and he's riding into Jerusalem. He's making his grand entrance like that. And he say, well, that's not cool. That, that's not king-like. Well, why? Why do that? Why? Because it's not about the show. It's not about me. It's not about the spotlight being on me. I'm trying to teach you a lesson in humility. You know? He let Mary try to teach everybody one, and now he's trying to do it. And he's going to try it again later on in, in, during this, these next few days. When he's like, it's not about getting on the big white horse or in the big chariot, being all dressed up, and go bouncing in there like I own the world. Because the fact is, he did own the world. But that didn't matter. That wasn't the point of the whole thing. It was about, let me humble myself. Let me do it again where they can all see. Let me make my entrance like a normal, simple, everyday person, regardless of who I am. Okay? Let me do this. Let me show them it's not about... It's not about all of us. It's about the people we come in contact with, the people that are in pain, the people that are suffering, the people that need not a, a, a reached out hand with a check in it, but a reached out hand of love and compassion to take a hold to them and say, you know what, God loves you and so do I. There's something better than what you're dealing with in life. We, it, it can be made better, but we have to acknowledge Christ. And so he rides in, and, and you get that picture. And you, you see this, all these people, I can just see them on the road. And they're hollering, Hosanna to the Son of David, who comes in the name of the Lord is the blessed one. Hosanna in the highest. And in just a few days from now, what are they going to say? What are they going to say? They're going to say, crucify him. You know why? <laughs> because they crumbled the pressure. Because, see, now they're in there where all those Romans are at. Now we've got Pilate to deal with. Now we ain't so proud of Jesus. Now it's not about Hosanna and, and, and he who comes in the name of the Lord, the blessed one. It's not about all that. We're not so big and strong now. Where did our faith go? You know? And, and that's what's going on. That's what's going on in the world today. That's what's going on in our churches. We come in here and we talk a big game, but when we get out there 
and we're in the world and we're around all those other people that may not believe or they got a sour taste in their mouth, it's like, who? G G Jesus? Oh, uh, we don't need to talk about that. Nothing's changed for the most part. But there needs to be a change. There needs to be a change in our churches, in our lives, in the world today. And the only way there's going to be change is we have to follow these, these examples that Jesus has taught us. And one of those examples is humility. We got to quit bouncing around for the show. It's not about the show. It's about Christ. It's about his love and that love coming through us to other people. And, and it can be done. You know? Remember. You always have to remember this. Okay? And in the coming days and next weekend, I really want you to think about this. Jesus had the power to summon the very angels from heaven. He could have laid waste to everything around him. Right? He could have said, Israelites, here it is, it's yours. What would that have taught them? Go ahead and say it. Absolutely nothing. What they would have seen is, if we want it, we can take it. We can take it by force. If someone doesn't agree with us, we can, we can do whatever. You know, we, we need to look at this passage of Scripture, the ones in the last couple of weeks we've talked about and those that we'll see in the coming days. There's a better way. There's a better way. We need to enter softly and, and quietly like Jesus did. Je you know, yeah, the people were yelling, but, you know, Jesus didn't make a big deal about it. You know, he didn't jump up and say, here I am. You didn't see the marquees, Jesus is coming, and those big spotlights flinging in the air and all that. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. He just said, I'm going to go in there nice, simple, and quiet, and I'm going to do what I need to do. Because just like I said, that beast of burden that we, those pack mules and everything and stuff like that that we, we've piled stuff on through the years and we've drug them through whatever to get to where we needed to go. And we see it on TV and in the movies and, and all. In just a few days, Jesus is about to carry a burden. He's about to put the entire weight of the world's sin on his shoulder and he's about to be sacrificed. Not because it's about a big show. Not because he just got up one morning and said, I think this is the thing to do. It'll make me look cool. It's because he humbled himself for the world because he loves us that much. And he said, this is what I want you to take away from this. I'm about to be humiliated and I'm the king of kings. They're about to strip me completely naked. They're about to... Uh, uh, auction off my clothes at my feet. They're going to spit on me. They're going to curse me. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to save the man's soul that's right beside me, and I'm going to tell him, look, because of, of your faith, because of what you believe in today, we're going to be in glory. You're going to be in glory with me today. In his last words, he didn't say, Father, punish each and every one of them. Bring the plagues to them. Look what they've done to me. I've loved them. I've done everything. No, his last dying words were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they have done. He never once got all tore up. Now, there, there were some times, and we can go back and look at the Scripture, you know, where he said, now, if this cup should, should need to pass from me, I mean, that's okay. But if it is your will that this be carried out, so be it. Well, his will today is for us to go forth and love people, to quit the arguing, the backstabbing, the talking about everybody. We need to pick up the phone instead of harsh words. We need to be calling people and lifting them up. 
We need to call people during the, the, the week that we haven't seen. We need to say, hey, look, what's going on in your life? How can I help you today? What do you need? Do you need just someone to talk to? Let's go have a cup of coffee. There's a lot of different ways we can do things and we can get the message of Jesus Christ across to those outside of these walls. Because, folks, it's easy to sing Hosanna in here. It's easy to say, oh, praise Jesus in here. Because we're all together. We're all a big family, right? Go to Cracker Barrel when you get done here and go in there and stand front and center in front of that nice warm fireplace and say, praise be to God, Jesus loves each and every one of you. And do it with boldness and don't, 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 don't give up an inch. You see? We have to go forward with boldness. And I don't mean putting on a show because, I mean, that would be a little, that would be a little showing. But I can tell you what happened there one time. You think people don't pay attention to what you're doing. I used to meet some other preachers occasionally on Friday morning at Cracker Barrel. A lot of them still meet there. If you know Brian McIntyre, he's one of them. And it was a whole group of us. When you, when you go past the fireplace in Cracker Barrel, on the other corner is one of those great big round tables, just like it is when you come around from the hostess station there on the right. So we're all sitting back there. And we all had our Bibles open. We had our breakfast and was doing a little Bible study. And um, there, there was a, another uh, couple that was sitting across from us that, that knew some of the other guys that were there. And um, <clears throat> there was a, at that time, there was a, a, a black gentleman there. He was a, a waiter and uh, a server, whatever, whatever's politically correct these days. Um, last night I was talking to Brad and I said secretary and I said, hold up. Heather will smack me in the mouth if I say secretary. It's executive ex assistant, I think, nowadays. But anyway, these folks knew this gentleman and, and knew what he was capable of, uh, of doing. So I, I saw him. They called him over, and the man's talking to him, and he points back over here. And all. Now, keep in mind, this is Cracker Barrel Friday mornings full of people. And the guy comes over there to the table, steps up to the table, clears his throat, puts his hands down, and he sings that song, Beulah Land, like I've never heard it sang before. You could have heard a pin drop in Cracker Barrel. When he was finished, the place erupted into a, a, a applause and everything. But you see, he sung a song that, that, that means so much. And he said it with, he sang it with boldness. And you know what? It wasn't about him. See? It wasn't about who was standing there doing it. It was about the words that was coming out of his mouth. It was about the gift God had given him. And, and it touched lives in there. It probably put a, maybe there was somebody in there that was already having a bad morning. They're in there trying to eat their breakfast, and they're about to go out and face the world for the rest of the day, and they really didn't want to. And because they hear this, because somebody had the strength and the ability to stand up and do something, Maybe their whole day was changed. Maybe they left there with a smile. Because somebody was willing to stand up for Christ. And stand up and, and you know, come to a, a table of pastors and, and, and say, hey, I got, I got something for you guys. And it was just wonderful. So I encourage you this morning. You know, I challenge you to be humble. Take these lessons and go out into the world and use them. There, there, there are people out there that, you know, they need to hear the word of God. You know, and some of them, you know, I, look, everybody needs to hear the word of God. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes they just need to hear a kind word from us. We can make a difference, folks. They're, they're, you know, uh, I'm sure yesterday morning that as people got here, they were like, it's crazy, preachers got me out here. And, it's, and, and, and see, it was supposed to be 33 degrees. When I got here yesterday morning, it was 39. So the Lord was already looking out for us. He already gave us six more degrees than we were promised, than, than what the weatherman promised us, okay? So that goes to show the weatherman's not in charge. And it, it, it looked at first glance like this is too much. We can't do this. And it was a lot. 
but we did. Everybody came together. Everything was accomplished. And, and you know what? <clears throat> I didn't hear anybody complain. And when we were done, everybody stood around and said, wow, how much better this looks. Because we came together in the name of Jesus Christ, and, and, and we, we did something together as a family, as a body of Christ. So just as that looked overwhelming, okay, and there, there were times it felt overwhelming, and probably this morning it probably still feels a little overwhelming, but you see, we made it through it. Going out there and preaching the gospel, and you don't have to preach it like I stand up here and preach. You can just talk to people. It may seem overwhelming some days, but know that Jesus is with you and nothing is too big for him. Not even the cross, not even death on that very cross. He said, I got you. I love you. I'm dying and I still love you. I did all this for you. So this morning, as, as Ruth and Miss Amanda come, and we have our final songs. I want you to think about all this. I want you to think about the lessons that he's trying to teach us and that we so quickly read over sometimes. We glaze over them and we're just like, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, that don't really mean nothing. That's really not a big lesson. I'm going to focus on the fact that come Sunday, the tomb was empty. Well, and that's, that's fine. That's all fine, well, and good. But let me tell you something. There's lessons, so many to be learned leading up to that empty tomb that we need to take away. So this morning, if you're here and you have a prayer concern, I, I invite you to come down to the altar and we'll pray. Or if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please come down. Get, get to know him. It's going to be a life-changing experience. Let me tell you something. He'll change your life in ways you never even thought were possible. And one day, let me tell you, keep this in mind. One day, we're all going to meet up there with him. And we're going to hear those words, men are good and faithful servant. Wow, what a great day it's going to be. So please stand and take your hymnals and turn to 354. We'll sing the first and last verse. Please stand. <clears throat> are sending forth him. <clears throat> Yeah.
beautiful day. Go and enjoy. And thanks to these kiddos for, uh, you know, it was kind of a last minute thing. And, um, they had to figure out what they were going to do this morning. But uh, you kiddos don't forget now, next year, they're going to take those. They won't be pretty and green like that. They'll be all dried up, and shriveled up, and we're going to burn those things. And then I'm going to put a nice cross on everybody's forehead. Ash Wednesday, so go forth and, and be be humble. You know, it, it's easy to be it's easy to be ugly to somebody because that's what the world wants us to be. That, you know, we, we get all kind of tools to do that. Okay, go forth and and, and be Christ like. Do something that's going to be a little little bit hard. It's going to take a little effort. Let's go forth and be nice in a world that teaches us otherwise, and and we need to teach our children. We, we need to listen to them because there's a lesson to be learned from our children also. But don't forget tonight, our board meeting at 5, and, um, you know, our Bible study and our children will be coming together and doing their, their Bible study. So anything before we dismiss? Again, thanks to everybody for all the hard work, uh, giving up, you know, some came on Friday and gave up their time. Others came yesterday, uh, Saturday morning. It's all, it was cold, but you know what? It warmed up, and it was a beautiful day so now my prayer is that when waste management gets out here and pull up they don't say I don't think so uh, Amanda said something about doing something in one of those bags this morning she was told she might end up in one of those bags if she fools with those leaves uh, but anyway I tell you we had a good time so let's go forth and let's show the world that there's a better way, and a much better way. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, Lord, again, I thank you for this day. Father, for each and every person here, those that are listening uh, via this transmitter, our Facebook page, Lord, I thank you for each and every one of them. Father, but let us learn from your example. Let us be humble, slow to speak, slow to point the finger, but let us have an outreached hand of love. Let us, as we walk through Holy Week, let us remember the sacrifice that's about to take place, the sacrifice that was all out of love and compassion, the pain, the suffering. But Father, let us, with wide open eyes, let us see the tomb is empty. We thank you for that. We thank you for your son and for his sacrifice. Father, as we depart today, let us do so with your peace and your mercy. This I ask in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.